Hi, how are you? And welcome to the topic of this week. This week we're talking about hydration, which basically is how to keep uh, the correct level, the proper levels of water in our skin, okay? And why is this such important, such important thing? Well, every month we, uh, we sheet, I mean, we have this sheeting process of our dead cells. So basically every, every month we remove, we let go uh, dead cells and new cells can come up to the surface of our skin, okay? However, if the hydration levels of our, of our skin are not okay, this sheeting process is not going to work well. And therefore, some dead cells stay in the surface of our skin. When those dead cells uh, mixes weeks with sebum, then the comedons starts appearing. This is what happens. This is the way our teenagers starts having start having acne. Okay, because everything starts with sebum and dead cells that mix together to form to form comedons. Okay, so if we keep, I mean, if maybe we are used to treat the symptoms, but we are not used to treat the causes of the of the skin condition. So. I want you to I want you to learn how to take care of the basis, okay? And the basis uh, for having a, a nice skin, a healthy skin, not just for you but for your kids because they are getting to the teenagers and it, during this age there are a lot of changes and we don't want the skin to be a problem for them. So if we want to keep their skin healthy, hydration is such an important thing. I want to be so emphatic on this. That is why that is why we are going to talk about that this week. This week we are talking about the six steps on how to keep the hydration level of your kids' skin in the top. Okay, <laughs> so if you wanna keep seeing these videos, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. Okay, let's move forward. Before talking about hydration levels and how to keep them in place, I want to talk to you about DEWL, which is transepidermical water loss, which basically is the amount of water that we lose every day uh, through our skin. Okay, so for example, when we exercise, because the internal temperature of the body increases, the, the, the skin, which is the, the organ that regulates our temperature, releases sweat, okay? But we don't need to sweat to release water to our skin, okay? So the T -E, when the TEWL is increased, is because we are evaporating more water than need than is that is needed. So if we don't take enough of water through drinking water or to apply topical uh, uh, topical ingredients which brings hydration to our skin, maybe we can get to dehydration. Okay. So what we need to keep the TEWL in place, and when we have ha adequate or proper hydration levels, or skin works well, and therefore TEWL works well, okay? But when we don't, then we don't have enough water in our skin because we are releasing too much water, uh, which means having an increased TEWL, and we are not compensating that with the intake of water to our skin. When we understand TEWL, maybe we, maybe we think, okay, this is like a chicken and egg thing. <laughs> what happens first, okay? So the thing is, if the TEWL increases, then we evaporate more water. If we can't intake the, that water, put that water again in our skin, we are going to dehydrate, uh, de dehydrate our skin. So, and if that happens, our skin is not work, not going to work properly. And if that happens, then the TWL increases. <laughs> so basically, we we start making like this vicious circle 
that affects the health and sulfur skin. That is why we need to use a moisturizer. So I want to I want to focus right now in what does a moisturizer has to have? What is a moisturizing process? Because it's not just about water. It's not just about drinking water. And maybe you think, okay, I drink two liters of water per day and that's enough. But the truth is that because of our skin is not only drinking water from the inside of our, of our, of our, of our body, uh, is, uh, our skin is all also taking water from the environment. So when we, when we drink water, yes, we are giving water to the body, to our cells, to our internal skin layer. So our external skin layer can drink water from the inside. But we also need to put high, uh, ingredients that can uh, increase the capacity of our skin to absorb water from the environment. Okay, that is what we call humectants. Okay, also when when our skin drinks water, there are like these little uh, these little spaces there where is no water inside. So we also need emollients. Emollients is the capacity of fill those blanks with oil. Then our skin is going to feel sooth, okay, and and and, and soft. That is emollient. So a moisturizer has to have humectants, which increases the capacity of absorbing water, emollients, which uh, soothes the skin, filling the blanks with little droplets of oil, and it has to be occlusive. What is occlusive? Is the capacity of make a film in our skin, in the external layer of our skin, and therefore avoid that that water that we are putting there escapes through the TEWL. So when we talk about a good moisturizer, the three features are needed. Humectant properties, emollients, and occlusivity, okay? So, and you know when we when we talk about choosing a moisturizer, we are not choosing, and we are not talking about one single product. We maybe this can be in one product or in several products. Okay, now that we know how the hydration process works, let's talk about the six steps that we need to accomplish if we want our teenagers to have the hydration levels in place. Okay, let's start. Step one, everything starts with cleansing. We tend to think that we need, that if we clean our face and our, and our face remains like this, like so tight and stretched, is because we are having a good cleansing. That is not correct. What is happening there is that our cleanser is so harsh in our skin that it's taking away all the natural oils that prevent our water from escaping our skin. So if you are having that situation, you need to change your cleanser, but it's probably being too harsh on your skin and it's going to cause dehydration sooner or later. Okay, so how to choose a nice cleanser for our teenagers? It's normal that we worry because they are having more sebum and we don't want this oily face anymore. And yes, we may become think that having those ostrichens that take away all the sebum is okay, but it's not. It has to be made softer. So the best way to clean the face of a teenager for me actually is not just for a teenager in general I, is the two steps cleansing the first step is cleansing with oil why because it is much much softer for the skin to uh, have an oil that mixes with sebum and therefore with the water uh, release the excess of sebum without releasing the natural oil oils of the skin and then complement with that water based cleanser I wrote a blog about it. I will link the, uh, the, the, the link to have access to that blog and some recommended, recommended cleansers that have the two steps in place. Uh, but definitely, I think this is the best way 
to keep the face completely cleansed without using any harsh ingredients. It's important to choose uh, for the water-based cleanser to choose uh, cleansers with enough of amount of humectants uh, like aloe vera, like glycerin, to have herbal extracts and to avoid sulfates like SLS, like sodium lauryl sulfate. Uh, you know, we have now in the market a uh, coconut derived uh, surfactants that are much, much softer with skin than, than sulfates, okay? So it's important to choose well. I will link the link below. Therefore, you can go and read some, uh, some uh, recommendations that I made in my blog regarding the cleansing process. Step two, the antioxidant booster. And here I am talking specifically about vitamin C. And why is this important? As you know, we are all exposed to environmental stressors, pollution, sun rays, and now that we are, you know, we have more global heating and we have more pollution, so for that, for those people like me who live in a very populated city, we need to increase the antioxidant protection because sun rays, uh, what happens to our skin when, when we are exposed to sun on a regular basis is that our cells start damaging. And when, when that happens, the, the collagen starts decreasing. And when the collagen decreases, our skin starts to be less prepared for being hydrated. So yes, collagen also affects the level of hydration of our skin. So we used to think that we only needed antioxidant protection from 30 years old or something, but the truth is that the global hearing has been increased. And we have more environmental stressors right now than 20 years ago. So I am the, the kind of people who recommends using vitamin C since a very early age, like teenagers, okay? Like teenage. Uh, why? Because, you know, first, uh, vitamin C is very good for skin. It's a great antioxidant and helps to protect from sun rays uh, and for the exposure to sun. But also, it's a great uh, exfoliant. It's a great natural exfoliant. So, uh, or if, especially for teenagers, if they already have this kind of cameras, it's going to soft that exfoliation and help the skin to remove those dead cells that were not removed properly and that are causing camera. So yes, I recommend vitamin C from the very, very early age. And I'm going to leave you here also a link to my blog where I talk about how young skin starts, uh, starts aging. Uh, and, and there I recommend some, na some natural vitamin C that you can buy for your teenagers. Okay, let's go to step three, moisturizing. How to choose the right moisturizer for your kids, for to, your twins and teenagers' kids? Uh, okay, we already saw that we need at least three, uh, three features that our moisturizer has to have: humectant capacity, emollients, and occlusivity. Okay, to help humectant for help the skin to absorb more water from the environment, uh, emollients to soothe the skin and agglucivity that avoids those ingredients and that, that water escape from skin through the evaporating process. So, uh, is that all contained in one single product? Not necessary. That is why I refer to moisturizing process more like a process than like a product. We find in the market, for example, this, uh, this moisturizing process divided, for example, in two different products. Maybe a uh, hyaluronic acid serum, which is a great humectant, great humectant, and keep it, keep it in a single product of hyaluronic acid, then can uh, bring like a high percentage of hyaluronic, and then complement it with a light lotion. You don't need to have like uh, a lot of, of oils in, in your kid's face, no. You can have a light lotion, okay? So maybe maybe you can use two different products. 
However, for teenagers, I recommend to keep it simple. Why? Because it's hard enough to convince them to adopt the skincare routine, to, to make them conscious of how, of how important it is for them to take care of themselves. Uh, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't present them like 80 products for a skincare routine. I would try to make it as simple as possible. So, uh, for example, in, the, in Twin Green's uh, skincare brand that we are about to launch, we try to keep it in one single product, which has great humectants, great antioxidant capacity, and great oil, and a, a, a small oil phase. Uh, they don't need a lot of oils, but this little oil phase is going to keep those beautiful ingredients uh, put it, put that are put in a bottle to keep them locked in, your fa in their face. So for me, for choosing a teenager uh, product, I definitely would keep it simple. Step four, sunscreen. We already talked in the step two how important it is to keep our skin protected from sun, from sun rays and from environmental stressors. So sunscreen is absolutely important for the face of your skin of, of your kids okay so which one to choose and how to choose that I, I will write a blog in the future about it but for now I want to leave you this message first uh, about the SPF I, I I prefer 50 of SPF instead of 30 or instead of a hundred or 70 I think 50 is gives enough for protection without being so uh, so <laughs> ticket for the skin. Um, uh, now, in between how to choose them, there are like two kind of, of sunscreens, mineral and chemical sunscreens. Chemical ones are those that are, are has these nanoparticles that are, are, are so absorbed by the skin and when the UV rays gets in the skin, they like I don't know if this if this is the correct word, but would be like metabolize them then the, the sun rays don't affect our skin. However, because the chemical sunscreen needs to be absorbed by the skin, uh, some studies have shown that probably it could have a, a hormonal effect in our body. So I do not, I try to not use, for not using chemical sunscreen, I prefer mineral sunscreen which are based in zinc dioxide. Uh, what, what, what mineral sunscreen do is that they create this protective, protective layer in our skin and they reflect sun, sun, sun rays, okay? So this way we don't absorb not the, the sunscreen, the sunscreen or not the, the, the UV rays. Okay, so I think they are much better for, for skin. They are like a little thicker, thicker. so, uh, you know, for our kids, it's hard sometimes to, uh, to put them because they feel, it, they, they, the sunscreen feel a little heavy and that's correct, they feel that way. Actually, if you use a sunscreen in your thin skin, it's absolutely a must to have the two steps cleansing process in place because uh, water-based pro uh, products don't clean well sunscreens in general. So in, in change, uh, oil-based oil cleansers are good for removing that excess of oils that is, br is broke with a sunscreen and avoid that, that the pores can clog. So what I want to leave you here is that absolutely important for them to use sunscreen, please choose one that can be mineral, maybe SPF 50, and can have a dislike texture in their skin, but don't avoid this step, please. Step five, face mist. Um, this is not necessary a must <laughs> for, for example, oily skin, okay? But for dry skin, if your teenagers have a dry skin or if we are in cold weather uh, all the time or 
or when we are during the winter is a very important step. Basically, what a face mist does is that is this like spray in the skin uh, and it's, it, it contains water and some humectant ingredients and a little of fragrance and that's it. It's a very simple uh, product that helps to keep the skin hydrated during the day. Remember that when we get, for example, to cold waters, the amount of humidity in the environment decreases. That is why we need to give an extra help of water to the skin because the skin is not finding enough of water in the environment. So face mist, I would I would keep it for cold we cold waters and for those kids who have this tendency to have dry skin or very very sensitive skin. Step six. This step is this step is reserved for those kids that have already presenting signs of acne. I mean, if you are the mom of a twin, um, the mandatory and, the, the, and your kid is not presenting any signs of acne yet. Maybe only a step one cleansing process, a step three um, moisturizing, and a step four sunscreen, and the only steps that are mandatory and should be repeated at night. It's very, very important to have the two step cleansing process, especially at night, because we need that oil, the oil based cleanser, remove the sunscreen okay remember it's very important otherwise your kid will have blood pour, clot pores okay so um, what is the treatment when your kid already has uh, signs of acne maybe if, if it's your, it's your starting I would recommend to use a serum that increases cell renewal for example I'm preparing a serum with vacuole which increase increases cell renewal uh, the cell renewal process without irritating skin okay uh, but however if the acne is already advanced it's important for you to go to the dermatologist a uh, dermatologist will, will probably send some treatment based in acids and um, which will help also with the renewal process and of the, of, this, of those external cells in order to improve the complexion of the of their skin. Uh, so this step is not mandatory, but is absolutely necessary, necessary if your skin, if your kids is already presenting presenting acne signs. Okay, and we got to the end of this uh, video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. You know, my purpose is to uh, clean or the teen faces from the base. I mean, as a mom, we don't want to wait that our teenager starts showing acne for taking action and taking care of their skin. If we can prevent that with the right skincare routine, especially with natural skincare and avoid toxins and chemicals uh, in their skin from a very early age. So if you enjoyed this content, please help me share it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and to activate notifications. And I see you in the next video. Bye.